Hello, welcome to QPB Outdoors. All right, let's go get that caveman steak going. I'm back in camp. I'm getting ready to uh, make our fire for caveman steaks. Uh, oh, I wish I had my camp stool. Um, the coals are burning down. Uh, I was going to do a foil pack with the caveman steak, but I forgot the foil. There's a few things I could uh, do a little bit better. One, make a list. Um, but these vegetables were already frozen and cut up, most of them. It was called California Melody. I'm looking forward to it. One of them, and I'm not sure if this one, actually has water chestnuts in it. But I went ahead and, and then off camera sliced up some onion and some mushrooms. And then it's cauliflower, uh, carrot, broccoli. Uh, I might get that surprise water chestnut. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, olive oil in the bottom of my Pathfinder canteen cup. I'm just going to put all those veggies in there and set it next to the fire. You know, most of this stuff you can eat raw anyway. So uh, I'm not going to make it actually al dente, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, cook it. But I'm not going to cook the devil out of it. It's good. And it's hot enough by the fire. Um, I can just stick it right there and uh, rotate the canteen cup like I did uh, earlier. No, last night for the jambalaya. And that's going to get hot. So I'm going to have to get my fish mouth spreader then. This is how I'm going to prepare. Oh. And when that's all done, instead of a little salt and pepper, I'm just going to throw a splash of that Creo seasoning in there to flavor that up. Now, I'm not going to put any on the steak. Um, I've kind of got a new favorite way of doing steak, and that's just to salt it and pepper it. Um, I've got some marinades I like, and, and I've got other ways to do it, but uh, over the years and as time goes by, I quit throwing the soy and the... Uh, just everything you could find in your spice cabinet on a steak. A good steak really doesn't need a lot of flavoring. And uh, this one here is a little New York strip. Now I don't backpack with this, but since we're making a YouTube video about camping and cooking, I've got my fresh ground pink Himalaya sea salt. I can hear my canteen cup cooking. I even brought some spare hot dogs in case I ran out of food. Although, I'm actually like a camel. I got energy stored. And maybe uh, not really being hungry is a blessing. I've been losing some weight and trying to watch my diet. Um, I go good for a while, then I go bad for a while. I go good for a while, then I go bad for a while. Corona was definitely not good for losing weight. I think that I had a little... Uh, I was rotating from bed to the bathroom to the kitchen for something to eat the couch for TV, and that, that was my rotation, those four places. Bathroom, bed, kitchen, couch. Bathroom, bed, kitchen, couch, in any order. That was hot. I can just let that canteen cook stay a little away from there. My coals aren't quite ready yet. I'm gonna let the steak just sit here with the salt and the pepper on it. This pan, and I'm sure you can't see it, is a Griswold number three, for those people that like antiques out there. It was made in Erie, Pennsylvania, and uh, a lot of people love to collect it, uh, Griswold cast iron. Um, cast iron from Erie is the one I'm most familiar with. I understand, you know, it's probably a regional thing. Cast iron's been around forever. There's probably forges everywhere. So in this area, Griswold or Erie brand, um, they changed their name from Erie to Griswold. Uh, is a very collectible one and I understand there's some collectible ones down Georgia and probably all across the country 
Uh, when I have some spare time, I'll have to look into cast iron. I won't mention my camp stool again. I'm rotating my vegetables. I can hear them in there doing their thing. I'm going to kick some of this fire out of the way. I think I got enough coals here that I can do our uh, caveman steak. Okay, guys. Are you ready for caveman steak? Some of you have seen this before, some of you haven't, and I'm not going to fry it in a fry pan. That just isn't a good grilled steak. Behold. Right on the coals. That's caveman steak. The pan will be my plate. It is starting to get dark out here. Headlamp. The last time when I threw the steak on, we still had enough light to see. Stirred my California melody, and uh, I got distracted by the steak. I stirred my California melody, added a little more, a little more uh, olive oil to it, and then just a touch of my Creo seasoning. And I didn't get crazy with the Creo. Now, those coals that were stuck on that steak and ashes. They just fell right off. It doesn't get stuck with coal and ashes like you would think it would. You don't have an ashy steak. This thing will come out grilled as nice as it could have been on any outdoor grill. It's a cool way to cook a steak in the woods. Couldn't find my fork. I got a little light on the subject. I'm going to pull that um, steak off and... Uh, and uh, check it. Oh, I think it's it, it feels done to me. See the coals flick right off. That uh, little bit of burnt stuff right here was the uh, fat and, and right there. But uh, if I cut into this, I'm gonna I'm not gonna make a prediction. Let's see what it's gonna be when I cut into it. Using the number eight oak nail knife. These are made in France. It was interesting. Years ago, I went to French commando school. Um, U.S. Army sent a, a platoon. And we went through the school with uh, three platoons of French. So we made up one company for four, four platoons. And uh, the French soldiers, they had utility knives uh, that they used in the field all day. And, and I couldn't believe it. We went in the mess hall, and at chow time, Every single one of them brought one of these out of their pocket. And this is what they used for food preparation. Cutting the bread, um, butter. Bread and butter is a big breakfast in France. So it was really cool. Years later, I had the opportunity to purchase one. And it's a little bit of a nostalgia for me because uh, I got to see them in use. Oh, this is just a little bit pink yet in the middle for me. It's going to go on a little bit. So I might be a little crispy around the edges. And that's okay. i got to get that blood out of the middle. That's me. My dad liked it that way. He used to say, cut it off the cow and walk it in the sun. He liked rare. I used to like well done. I'm kind of between medium and medium well now. Okay, guys. Caveman steak. It came out almost a perfect uh, medium rare. It's a little crispy on the edges where the fat burned. And then our vegetable melody. Mm. Seasoned with a uh, little bit of Creo seasoning. Caveman steak and vegetable melody. I'm sorry you guys couldn't join me, but I'm going to sit down and chow down.